Welcome to another week, another show of Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. Most importantly, with her, <laughs> head coach Lisa Bluter. Lisa, thanks for joining us. Great to see you. My pleasure, Dave. Thanks for having me. Truly my pleasure. You're welcome. So folks, as we've been teasing for the last couple of weeks, depending on the order we air these over the holiday season, Coach Bluter going to join us for this show, then Caitlin Clark, you may have heard of her, and also Monica Sonano. All three separate shows, Monica Sonano, Caitlin Clark, and Coach Lisa Bluter. So right here at Carver Hawkeye Arena, so how cool is this? So thanks again, Coach. And Let's get right to it. i got so much I'd love to talk with you about. And you and I have talked in the past on radio, my past radio shows. You've been kind enough with your time. i got to bring you back. The first time, folks, that I talked to Coach Bluter was the late 90s. And you were part of the 40 under 40 in Des Moines. You were head coach at Drake after your six years at St. Ambrose. So if you would, take us back to that time at Drake. You had Jan Jensen there, and now it's well-documented. Jan's been with you the whole time and right. post Player Central here at Iowa. Long build up here for you, because I want you to take some time and kind of stretch that out for us, please. Oh, you know, after St. Ambrose, um, I was really fortunate to get the job at Drake. I, I interviewed at both Marquette and Drake, but I'm an Iowa girl. So for me, uh, Drake was the right choice. And I knew how good Drake had been uh, when Carol Baumgarten was yeah. there uh, in the 80s. And so definitely excited about that. And then I walk in and I get a coach, one of the best players in America, and Jan Jensen, who led the United States in scoring her senior year at 29.7 points per game. And a Southwest game. Iowa girl. Absolutely. And was a Rhodes Scholar candidate, just an unbelievable student as well as player so I really was able to walk into a very good situation at Drake and then obviously two years later we built the Knapp Center and that really helped because the field house was pretty old to play in yeah. it was hard to recruit to and then we started getting some of the best players in the state to come join us um, and Pretty soon we built a pretty good pretty good thing at Drake, and we ended up being the state champs there, sweeping Iowa State, Iowa, you and I, and uh, ending up, I think our last year ranked 23rd best in the, in the polls uh, in, our, in our last year before coming over here to Iowa. And I gotta take you back then before Drake and before St. Ambrose, and folks, uh, Coach told me in a, in a previous interview, you had to adjust more from playing with your brothers in the mean streets of Marion, <laughs> Iowa, uh, and playing five on five with them, and then adjusting to six on six Iowa high school girls basketball then, and mm -hmm. you were Miss Iowa basketball, and then you go to UNI and play five on five, and you said, Dave, it was easier for me to adjust from six on six to go to five on five in college. Talk about that and now how the game has morphed over all those years ago. And hey, I grew up in that era and I loved six on six. I loved yeah. watching it. Yeah. And you know, Oklahoma and Iowa were the last two mainstays in that. But talk about the maturation and how this game has changed so much, especially in women's basketball. It has changed so much. And I've been just very fortunate to have a front row seat to all the changes that have happened in women's basketball. But you know, going back from when I played six on six and you know, everybody loved that game. It was sold out. It was nationally televised. Yeah. It was featured in Sports Illustrated. We, Wayne Cooley did an unbelievable job making this really, you know, something that the state of Iowa was really proud of was yes. its girls' basketball programs. And so uh, I never made it to state. And that to this day, Dave, it still bothers me. It still bothers me <laughs> that I awesome. never made it to state. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, I, I did play six on six all the way through. They would do um, – they would do polls when I was in high school. Who wants to play five on five? Who wants to play six on six? I was the only one on my high school team that wanted to play five <laughs> on five because I really wanted to go on and play in, in college. And I knew I was going to be at a disadvantage, never playing defense in my life, only dribbling twice in my life. Um, but it really was easier because I did have, you know, people that I played with as I was younger, my brothers and different things that I was playing the five on five game. Um, in fact, the first time I played six on six, I dribbled three times and p traveling. And I was like, what are you talking about? I didn't know what I was doing wrong. But um, then I went on to you and I and I played there and it took about a year for me to really catch yeah. on to the five on five game. Just the transition part of it was so different. Um, but I'm really glad that I was able to play in college in the 70s. Uh, which is, you know, pretty unusual because it was just the beginning of Title IX. Even though Title IX was passed in 72, yeah. I just received a partial scholarship in 79. Wow. So, see, that's changed. Yeah. And, and, you know, you talk about marketing, and, and, and it was appointment television when we were kids, the Iowa High School Tournament. Oh, Remember, yeah. it was on public television. Yes. And even boys and girls basketball, and those folks were celebrities when we yes. were kids. That was like, you mentioned, they did a great job of marketing it. And I love your ever the competitor. It still bothers yeah. you that you didn't go to state. I mean, and how <laughs> it cool does. is that? It does. All the success you've had, it still gets to you. And, folks, just so you know, any place she's been that has a Hall of Fame, her name is in there. So uh, from St. Ambrose to Linmar to UNI and at Iowa, 20, you're into year 23 now, right? Yeah. 
as you think. And yeah. I was joking with you off the air, and we're gonna, before we run to this break, I do want to mention your daughter, Hannah, yeah. is your director of operations here for the University of Iowa Women's Basketball. And I was trying to decide when you did your press conference that took the job, I was trying to understand, and I asked you, which child were you pregnant with? Yes. Because you were pregnant when you did your presser, and I got the gig, and it was your daughter, Emma. That's correct. And now David is at Grinnell playing basketball his sophomore year, Grinnell College, and Emma's here at, at Iowa as a student, and then Hannah here. So, yeah, we were trying to figure out our buddy uh, Bailey Turney, your SID here for women's basketball, of who you were pregnant with. So that's yeah. the answer, Emma. It was Emma, and it was right in this very room, actually, that we held that press conference. I'll never forget it. Uh, Emma was, th or Hannah was three years old, and she was sitting on David's lap, and uh, Emma, Your husband, David. my, my yeah. husband, David. Yes. And, uh, yeah, I was pregnant with, with, Han with Emma and I figured, well, I was about eight and a half week months pregnant. I thought, well, I can go right over to the hospital if I need to. <laughs> so it's okay. Um, but Emma is now a senior here at Iowa. So call, talk about coming full service, full circle. She is a senior in the education department, will be a future teacher for us and is going to be great. And Hannah working for me as my director of operations, who would have ever thought that you know, when we were in this room 20, 22, 23 years ago. I'm um, really proud of her. She has one class left, and then she'll have her master's in sports administration from Northwestern, and uh, who knows what will happen after that. So, Dr. Grant, yes, please, let's talk yeah. about that. Yeah. Um, Dr. Grant hired me. Uh, Bob Bowlesby was here, but Dr. Grant hired me, and after about four or five, six months, she was retiring. And I was just so sad because here I had this opportunity to work for one of the best women in the whole United States that had done the most for gender equity, Title IX. Yeah. And I just wanted to be a part of her life. I wanted to learn from her. Um, but luckily, I was able to because she stayed here in this community. And so she went from being my boss to really being my mentor. And I was able to pick her ear, go to her house, take her for lunch, um, do so many things with Dr. Grant that I was still able to really embrace all the lessons that she was able to teach me over the years. So I'm very, very glad um, that I got to know Dr. Grant and she's passed away about a year ago yeah. from right now. Um, I saw her a week before she passed away, but she taught me a lot of valuable lessons. And I know that I would not be the coach or the mom or the woman that I am today without the lessons that I learned from Dr. Grant. Well, and our friends at the Cedar Rapids Gazette did that wonderful piece last year, the 50 women in sports, yes. and Dr. Grant was all over that. And mm -hmm. it was just nice to, to hear you talk about her a little bit because I know she was important in your life. She was. She was. Again, anytime I had a situation that I didn't know how to handle, um, she was there to help me. And one of the things that I really am proud about is that we were able to get the new North Liberty School named after her. Awesome. So it's the Dr. Christine Grant School. And uh, that all was just, I think she said, and she had so many accomplishments. I mean, she was named the Jura Ford uh, Leader of the Year. I mean, so many different things. She has a NCAA ballroom named after her. <laughs> uh, but for her, having that elementary school named after her was her highlight. That's awesome. And folks, we've got so much more to get to with Coach Lisa Bluter. We haven't even talked about this year's team, and you were talking about how great things are going in year 23 now at University of Iowa for you. But let's take a quick break, and we'll be back with more Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara, and head coach Lisa Bluter for the Iowa women's basketball team. We'll be back with more in just a few moments. To have a strong finish, you need an excellent start. It's true on the track and also in the field. That's why Mershman Seeds works tirelessly to deliver cutting edge technology year after year. Introducing Starting Line, Mershman Seed's latest advancement in seed treatment. Now providing added protection from white mold and sudden death syndrome all season. Ask for Starting Line Seed Treatment from Mershman Seeds, your friend in the field. Hi, I'm Joel from Tice Chevrolet. We've lived through some very interesting times the last few months. Ensuring everyone's safety is more important than ever. That is why we're participating in the Chevy Clean program. At your request, we will pick up your vehicle, service it, and return it after we've cleaned it using the current CDC guidelines. This is just another way to work towards exceeding your expectations. So give us a call and let us show you what it means to be part of the Tice Automotive family. Welcome back to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. There she is. Head coach Lisa Bluter of the Iowa women's basketball team going into year 23. So coach, another name that's big in your life and, and you know, that you followed, one between you, but uh, C. Vivian Stringer, the legend here at Iowa, and then Angie Lee between you and coach for about five years. But you know that name still was here when you got here. So let's talk about her and her life and career and what you walked into here then after Angie Lee 
And then that name comes up again, Jan Jensen. So I'm going to yeah. get out of the way and let you lay it out for yeah, us. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, even though there was a five-year difference between when Coach Stringer left here and I came, her legacy lived on. I mean, still does. you know, Hall of Fame basketball coach, yeah. the only person to take three different programs to a Final Four. Uh, just an amazing career. So I'm really, I, I was the kid though over at St. Ambrose. I was the coach over at St. Ambrose that would sneak over here to Carver Hawk Irene and watch her practices and try to get as much information out of her. I worked her basketball camps back then. So we did have a relationship. And then when I was at Drake, we played Iowa. Yeah. And so, um, you know, had the opportunity to compete against her. And then of course, um, when we, Rutgers joined the Big Ten, we really competed against each other. Um, but Coach Stringer's always been um, somebody that I've admired very much. When my husband was in a, a bad traffic accident in like 97 in Des Moines, and Coach Stringer was the first person that reached out to wow. me because of what had happened to her husband, Bill. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, I, you know, that's something we always kind of care. And then Dr. Grant hired both of us. Um, we had that connection. We both knew what it was like to sit in the chair at Iowa. Um, so we had a lot of connections, and I do consider her a mentor uh, and one of the first female women's basketball coaches that I really got to know. Yeah. Um, you know, I always respected Pat Summit, but really got to know Vivian. Um, and, you know, so this record that recently has been broken with most Big Ten wins, I took that over from Vivian. And I almost felt a little tarnished yeah. about that whole situation because I just think so much about, about Coach Stringer. I think that's wonderful. And just think of all the wonderful people, as you just oh. mentioned, that were a part of your life and career, and no one gets there by themselves. But a, a name i got to mention, and I'm going to start leaving names off, and I, mm. I don't like this when I do this, but we'll say Doyle, and you'll go Gustafson, and we'll talk <laughs> Disterhoff, and we'll say yep. Printy, and yep. you know now we've got Sonato and Clark, and you're, I apologize to all the other names I'm leaving off. But yeah, that right. gives you a template, folks, of what this woman has built. Mm. But without you and Jan Jensen, mm -hmm. man, Post City Central here in, in, in <laughs> Iowa, and and boy, I'll tell you, watching the work that you two have done with your post players, but I just got to ask you what, what next rabbit is coming out of the hat yeah. from Megan to them, and you got yeah. Caitlin Clark and Monica, and you've got other big recruits. We won't get anybody in yeah. trouble and mention names, right? but you got great recruiting classes coming in. But talk about that association with you and uh, Coach Jan Jensen. I just think that's wonderful. You know, I coached Jan for a year, so we had a different relationship starting out than working together. I mean, I coached her. Then she went over and played professionally in Germany, won the Euro Cup. Uh, and then came back um, and uh, was starting her master's degree at Drake and I hired her as an entry level position and she worked her way up the ladder very quickly and so now we've worked together for 31 years and also Jenny Fitzgerald yes. uh, came at the same time so the three of us have worked together for 31 years and I'm so blessed just to have their organization their commitment their you know just I mean it, it, it's um unheard of really yes. for three people to stay together that long in this kind of a business so I'm very thankful for that but Jan does work with our posts and she does such a great job as you know all the great posts that have went through this program and you named a couple of them you know we have Monica Sinano now who has led the country in field goal percentage the last two years Megan Gustafson was the national player of the year uh, and won the Lisa Leslie as the best post player of the year um, but before that, we had some really good post players too. Bethany Doolittle, Jamie Cavey, um, uh, Morgan Johnson. And so we had some great post players, um, but certainly, you know, Megan took us to a whole nother level. Yes, and thanks for confirming. I knew I'd leave names off, so there we go. And apologies to Coach Fitzgerald. I left her name yeah. off. That's right. And that's what I want to hone in on. And again, folks, you know the accolades here, and I don't mean to short sheet no. any of those, but Coaches of the Year honors, uh, you know, Elite Eight, as she mentioned, with uh, Megan Gustafson and all these other wonderful coaching accolades you've won but that's what I wanted to hone in on family here that's mm -hmm. all I see in here you hear Caitlin and Monica talk about it now mm -hmm. um, and you talk about it but that that is no garbage I mean you can mm -hmm. see clearly when you go to a game at Carver Hawkeye or see you folks on TV you really are a family unit yeah, and it's probably least displayed then because, yeah. you know, there I'm, at, I'm doing my job, you know, it's, it's business and we're intense and everything like that. Um, but, but man, this is a family. And I know a lot of people say that and brag about that, but it is different here. And one of our values is everyone matters. And I don't care how many minutes you play on our basketball program. You know, if you're the leading scorer, if you hardly get off the bench, you're just as important as everybody else because you're getting us ready for those games. You're a part of our circle. Yep. You're a part of our culture and our recruiting. And so it's just, it, it is an important thing. And I really, to me, the joy I get is not really from winning another game. 
It's more for what the impact I can have on these young ladies' lives. And that's what inspires me. And in, in fact, my mission statement is to use the sport of basketball to influence the next generation of female leaders. And that's what it's all about to me is, um, you know, watching them go on and be successful in their careers or watching them go on and have families and being a part of that uh, for the rest of their lives. You know, I, and I said to you when you came in here today and we, before we even started rolling the camera here, I find it fascinating when you see Carver Hawkeye packed for women's basketball and you see what Caitlin does with, with the, you know, comes in and high fives all the little girls and they're holding the posters, not just Caitlin, but Monica, every one of yeah. your teams, hi, players, high five, you coaches, to see the impact, not just on, and this is what uh, my production partner Michael and I were talking about before the show, it's not just young girls or girls. It's, you know, when Michael says, Caitlin Clark's the best basketball player, he calls games for Big Ten Network Plus and says, Caitlin Clark's the best basketball player, male or female in the country. Now, some people want to equivocate that. That's right. fine. We can discuss yep. that. Yeah. But I think what you, what you just brought up right there, and I would, not to correct you, but to add upon that, it's not the impact you're making just with young girls or little girls. Oh, Boys, yeah. everybody, everybody's enamored with this team of yours and what yeah. you've built here. I just think your community outreach is fantastic. Well, I mean, the women that come here understand they're more than just basketball players. They're going to be great students and they're going to be great ambassadors in our community. So they know that right up front. Um, and we always talk about when you're an Iowa women's basketball player, people are going to recognize you. And that can be a little bit of a burden at times. Yeah. But I mean, it, it's a welcome burden for these women that want to be role models. And we get out to the schools, we talk to the kids in the schools. Um, but yeah, to see those kids, even away games, that's yeah. what always amazes me. Away games. Uh, we were at Nebraska last year, and a little girl had Kate, a sign that said, Caitlin Clark, can I have your shoelaces? <laughs> and after the game, Caitlin walked over to her and took off her shoes and gave her her shoes. Wow. I mean, that's the type of impact and the type of young women that we have on this team. That's got to make you, that, like you said, that's what yeah. it's all about, it truly. Is. It is. Coach, we got to get to this year's team, okay. and most recently, yeah. but I yeah. just get lost in great stories with you, so thank you for taking the time. I'm getting greedy with your time, but we're going to come back with one more segment. Head coach Lisa Bluter here at Iowa Women's Basketball. I'm Dave O'Hara with Hawkeye, back with more in just a few moments. Hi, I'm Joel from Tice Automotive Family. We're living through some of the most interesting and challenging times many of us have ever seen. Knowing who you can rely on is more important than ever. Many of us turn to our families to get us through, and the same holds true here. From our fair upfront pricing to exceptional service after the sale, we truly want to exceed your expectations. So give us a call or stop by and let us show you what it means to be part of the Tice Automotive family. Who do you trust to produce the best deal? A seat company that's chasing technology or a seat company that's writing a book on it? Mersman Seeds is a leader in technology. We're independent and family owned. Our sister company, MS Technologies, provides access to world-class traits and genetics. And our starting line seed treatment is second to none. Who can you trust with your yields? Mersman Seeds, your friend in the field. Welcome back to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. There she is, head coach at Iowa Women's Basketball, head coach Lisa Bluter. Coach, we've spent the last two segments. It's been great reminiscing going on memory lane and building up to where we are today. And we talked about some of the great players. You've got two great players right now, and I'm going to have them on in, in subsequent shows uh, after you. Monica Sinano, mm -hmm. Caitlin Clark. Both players, how appropriate is it? Yeah, they're two years apart. But they're both approaching, by the time this show airs, tomorrow's Dartmouth game, looks like Caitlin will be at 2,000 points yeah. career. Yep. And Monica is only 31 away, and so she's going to get there either in the Dartmouth game or the Purdue game, yeah. unless something crazy happens, unless right. they, it won't. Um, that's incredible. To, on the same team, same yeah. time, and they both seem like they're more than happy to give it up to each other. Uh, you wouldn't think there's that many points out there, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, we score a lot of you points, like and, that, score, helps, yes, and yes. that helps. But as I understand it, that Caitlin will be the fastest person, NCAA, male or female basketball player, to get to 2,000 points, which is amazing. Yeah, it really is. I mean, that's an incredible accomplishment. <laughs> um, obviously, Caitlin can score the ball. And she can score it from anywhere, and she's amazing. Uh, but I always like to remind people, not only did she lead the country in scoring the last two years, she's led it in assists as well. And so she's not, like, just looking for her points. She's yeah. looking for those assists and sharing the ball. And her biggest target is Monica Sinano. Why not? And, you know, when you shoot the ball at such a high rate, you know, Caitlin's smart. She knows that's a walking assist for her. <laughs> uh, but also, you know, Monica wouldn't be nearing this number 
Had it not been for her shooting such a high percentage, 68% from That's the unreal. field is unbelievable. You made a comment the other day, and I've got to bring this up. You said both players are happy to be here, but they're happy they're here at the same time as mm -hmm. each other. I thought that was well-worded. Mm -hmm. You don't think about that until you just said yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, it's just like it, it's perfect that they're here yeah. together because they play, with, they play off of each other so well. You know, every great center needs a great point guard. Every great point guard needs a great center. Sure. And so it's just perfect that those two are here together. Okay, I have to ask. I'm going to tease you a little bit, but be honest, not that you haven't been the whole show. <laughs> Have you ever said with Caitlin, the logo threes, the 35, 40 footers, have you ever said the old coaching phrase, no, 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 okay, good shot, good shot, get back. Have you ever said that? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for being honest. I mean, How could yeah. you not? <laughs> you know, yeah, you're, no, no, oh my gosh. Great it's shot. almost more <laughs> astonishment than great shot. It's I had like, to ask. you know, that really <laughs> went in. And, you know, the thing is, is some of those shots are really crazy. But once she's made one, I, I want her to go for that sure. second one because she's kind of in that rhythm. She's in that, that zone. Um, but I, what I don't want is them to do them early because I think early she needs to get her teammates involved. But at the end of the quarter, the end of the game, when we need something to, to spark the audience, I know where I'm going to get it from. Yeah, and boy, I'll tell you, when she hits something like oh. that and you see her going back on D doing this number here. The place goes crazy. Off the rafters, you know? yeah. And our, our attendance in Carver-Hawkeye Arena this year has been just fabulous. I mean, last year we were the third best attended team yeah. in the United States, but we were the only team that had three straight sellouts to end the year last year. Three sellouts in Carver, 15,400 people. Um, this year we've had such great attendance already. Um, it's just, you know, this is a team that's fun to watch. Yeah. And I think people see the joy that they have playing the game. I knew I'd get lost with you, so i got to stay focused here for just a second. <laughs> okay, last year Big Ten regular season champs, Big Ten tournament champs, a bump on the road, kind of like the men yeah. last year, yep. an attorney. Um, this year you're state champions. You, know, you talked yeah. about never going to state. Actually, you did. <laughs> so, But, you know, you talked about winning the state title, beating Drake, although it was on overtime. Yeah, that had to be right. tough to go back to the place you kind of built, yeah. Nap, the Nap Center. Yeah. You win by eight in overtime. But then Iowa State, you handled them pretty well. That's mm -hmm. a 13-point victory against the team you're ranked 13th now as we talk in yep. the AP yep. um, but at the time they were ranked a little bit ahead of you you yep. beat Iowa State and Ashley Jones um, and then you beat uh, you and I this past Sunday and you know a gal you know well uh, you know coach Warren mm -hmm. at, at you and I but I love Caitlin when she did the national interview on uh, uh, you know the national the report um, anchors and, and the play-by-play -play folks the ladies were interviewing her and I was gonna I'm gonna joke with her here in a little bit is she dick by towel now the broadcaster she dropped two babies in the interview in the post game <laughs> I was the state for women's basketball, baby. And it, so she was definitely taken by the moment. And that is, you mentioned about being fun to watch. It's fun to see players have fun, too. Well, and, and Caitlin loves to compete. That's what makes her so special is, you know, everybody likes to win, but do they like to compete? Are you really going to go out yep. there and put everything on the line, win or lose? I mean, just compete your heart out. And that's, you know, how Caitlin plays. And I think that's what people are so attracted to her because it's hard to find that sometimes. If somebody just wears their heart on their sleeves, yeah. their emotions on their sleeve, they show their passion. Um, she does that. So um, it, it's, it's pretty fun. But, yeah, you know, being state champions this year is always a good accomplishment. Last year we won the Big Ten, like you said. Doing that was the first time ever in Iowa women's basketball mm -hmm. history that we'd won both of them yeah. in the same year. So it was a historic year for us. Um, you know, we did have a bump in the second round, losing to Creighton in a close game, a two-point game. But Creighton's a good basketball team. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's just – it's such a good reminder to every play is important and uh, never take that game, any game, for granted. So let's go one step farther. We're at about well, – let's say halfway because you're yeah. at the you know, semester break and you got yeah. Dartmouth before you get into the, the heart of the Big Ten season against Purdue after that little break. So how's this team looking as you're rolling – I know it's yeah. too early to tell you're not postseason yet, a couple months away, but – Get us into yeah. the mindset of this team and do you. Yeah, you know, we're not happy with where we are right now. I mean, we are happy with, you know, some of the wins that we've had. Sure. Um, we feel like we're going to do very well in this season, but we also know that we're not there yet and that we can improve, that we can improve our offense, even though, like, I was complaining about scoring 88 points the other night uh, against you and yeah. I, but it wasn't as beautiful of offense as I really want to see and as, as flowing as, as I would like to see. You're getting style points now, Coach? Yeah, you know, kind of, kind of. <laughs> I'm being picky about our yes, wins yes, now. Yeah. But that's okay because, again, we don't want to have something that, like last year that happened, and it could, but, it, you know, you can't be fearful, right? But right now we just are trying to make our, our team look as unified and as 
pretty a basketball as we can play. And, and I think we can still get there. I think we have room to grow. Well, Coach, you've only made me work hard today for only one reason, to try to uh -huh. land this plane <laughs> within the confines of a segmented show. Uh, we could go on and on, and I greatly appreciate your time. I don't want to be abusive. All this tells me is we've got to do it again soon, okay? All right, my pleasure. Great. Head Coach Lisa Bluter. My pleasure, Bluter. Dave. Good Truly, to see you. You're good to see you. Thank yeah. you so much. Head coach of the women's basketball team, Lisa Bluter, Iowan through and through, most yeah. importantly. So, hey, folks, again, thanks for tuning in. We'll be back with subsequent shows with Caitlin Clark and Monica Sonano. So for my buddy uh, Michael Merrick and also for uh, Bailey Turner for arranging all this SID for the Iowa women's basketball team. I'm Dave O'Hara with Hawkeye. That's all from me. Thanks to all of you. And as always, thanks for staying tuned at the end of the program for these rolling credits to give our advertisers and sponsors the attention and credit they so richly deserve. And as always, to our aforementioned guests and to you, the viewers. That's all from us at Hawkeye. Thanks to all of you.